We are here at the brilliant stadium, Villa Park, to talk to a true hometown hero and Aston Villa club legend. Gabby Agbonlahor burst onto the scene as a sprightly 19-year-old, full of pace, had a canny knack of scoring goals against the bitter rivals, the Blues, Birmingham City. 74 Premier League goals, an all-time uh, record scorer for Aston Villa, 341 appearances. This is Sutton's Big Games with Gabby Agbonlahor. In front of the Holt end with the man himself, Gabby Agbonlahor, the perfect hat-trick. Just going back to the 2008-2009 season, this was the first game of the season. You'd finished sixth the previous season. What were your hopes going into the, the season? I think our hopes were to try and break into Europe to um, get in the European positions and um, bring European football here. Going into the game, Manchester City, I mean, let's be honest, it's not the Manchester City of today. I'm not saying it was a bad hat-trick or anything, yep. but it was a dreadful first half. My friend, my Michael Richards, was playing um, centre-back. I just couldn't get past him. That's me being honest. Um, you know, he was a you know, great defender. He matched me for pace and strength, and I just couldn't get past him. I remember coming in at half-time thinking, like, I need to go to the other centre half here. I wasn't getting no joy. So it was, it was um, quite a bad first half. And then um, obviously second half it changed. Talk us through your first goal. So my first goal, I remember it was a cross into the back post. And um, I think it was Curtis Davis who um, headed it back across. And then I sort of got in front of the defender, gave him a little nudge and then um, side footed into the Did net. Did you mean it was it a fluke or? No, you know what? I just, meant, just tried to get anything on it. You know, to say, use the side of your foot when you're close. So um, yeah, it was nice to get that goal. And then your second one was a header, yep. I think, from yep, across, yep. was um, We always had Gareth Barry on that um, left-hand side of midfield, making runs into the, um, into the channel here. I think um, Ash Young might have put him through. And I just got into the um, near post space and um, luckily no one was marking me. So it was a free header, to be honest, and um, remember it going to the roof of the net. And, and what was going through your mind at that stage? You, you, you've got two. Were you thinking about the hat-trick? Had you scored a hat-trick no, for Villa no, no, previous no. to that? No? You know what? I was, I was thinking of a hat-trick, but more just to get the win. I think it was the first game of the season. You know, there was a lot of expectation on the squad. I think it was just to get the win, really. And then um, the third goal, I remember John Carew doing a little flick. I think it was over in that corner. And then um, Gareth Barry putting me through. You know, he's always going to put the right... Um, pace on the pass and then when I got through I just tried to get um, a finish off. And did, so as you were running through did you know where you were going to stick it? You know what I can't really lie I, I think when I was running through if I can remember I think I took a touch onto my left foot because I seen I think it was Micah he was coming onto my right side so I knew he was catching me um, bit by bit so I just wanted to get it away from him and I think Joe Hart made my mind up for me. He ran out and I tried to lift it over him. And what did that mean to you, scoring that hat-trick in front of this you know, great Holt end? I think it was even to score, score one goal in front of this um, Holt end is a, is a massive thing for anyone, especially a local lad. But to get a hat-trick, it was just um, it's a bit crazy, to be honest. Yeah. Seven minutes. I know, I know. You can do a lot in seven minutes. I know, and I think if you look back, I think there's um, only a few, isn't it? I've got quicker hat tricks in the space of seven minutes. I think there's only one. Robbie Fowler. Yeah, you knew that, didn't so, you? No, you told me. <laughs> <laughs> we were both left out of England squads. Unfortunately for you, you were left out of the England squad just yeah. before the start yeah. of the season. Um, did you feel you had a point to prove? Yeah, definitely. I was quite disappointed of not being in the squad, but when I look back at it now, the choice of strikers England had was like unlimited so it was quite tough to get in that squad I just wanted to try and do my best in that game to try and change the manager's mind. Was there mind. a fire in your belly? Yeah though? yeah always I think it was a, a little bit to do with England squad but I think it's your first home game of the season you know what I mean it's a lovely sunny day in um, August you know everyone wants, wants a good start to the league and I think that was the biggest thing to get a good start. And did you prove a point to Capello, you think? Yeah, I think that? so, yeah. I think I might have got in um, the next squad. Did you call squad. him I think so. No, 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 no. I didn't have his number. <laughs> I wish I did the... Have you still got the match ball? What have you done? Oh. My dad took it off me, to be honest. you joking? Yeah, he's got everything. I have to try and get it back one day. But he's got it framed in his house. So, um, yeah. And how many hat-tricks did you get one. for Villa? Yeah, and just, that was it? Just the one. He's got it, yeah. Well, there you have it. That's what happens. The one? The perfect one? <laughs> yeah, he's got it. And you know it was a perfect hat-trick? Yeah, yeah, um, I think. Were you aware of that with no, the third one the when time. you went to finish, did you think? Maybe if I'm lying, I'll say yeah, but no, I think and you look back, it's a perfect hat-trick, but I think you take any hat-trick nowadays in football. But it was great to get it, and um, when I look back at that game, I think it was like a tale of two halves. I think the first half was um, evens, and I think the second half we were better. 
And you had a, you had the knack of scoring big derby goals. Yeah. Which was your favourite derby goal? I've got to say it was the oh, score for it. It was the tell tell us about them all. I mean, we, we... I think like the, the first one um, was was big because you know coming from Birmingham and being a Villa man, you know how big the game is. You know what was the fee What was the feeling in the dressing room? I mean, I I, I can't lie. The, the, before the game started, I was very nervous. You know, you in like felt like the, um, how, how did the players feel about Birmingham? The Birmingham City players hate, hated them. It was sort of like you're going to war, if that makes sense. We, we, we knew we were going out there and you're playing against a team. You don't like any of their players. You see every one of their players as an enemy. You know, you, um, you know the fans that have come to watch, the fans that are watching around the world do not want to lose that game. It's, like, it's not even an option. That's the way we looked at it. It's not an option to lose. And then I think in the game, I um, stopped one on the line. And then cause I was on the line for um, corners against. And I was a bit like, whoa, that nearly went in. And then even to just go down the other end and get the win out, it was like, I could still feel the adrenaline today, you know? It's like something that, um, even when I tell my uh, my oldest son about it, he's, he's he feels the adrenaline as well, because the sort of game that you just don't lose and to score that winner and to see the delight on the Villa fans, is just massive. And how, how pressurised? Was the atmosphere? Was it the best? At, the the best atmosphere? Yeah, best atmosphere definitely. In? Especially like um, at their place, it's like a tighter pitch. You know, you got the fans giving you abuse. You know, any bad. Did you like that though? Yeah, did, yeah. Did no, you know what? I, I actually then? enjoyed every bit of abuse from um, every local team: Wolves, West Brom, Blues. I think you it can't made enjoy. No, but you it made me play it. better. Oh, okay, it made yeah, me yeah. want to score more. It made me want to like chase the defender more. Does that make sense? And every time. The every enjoy, time the I played against them, sense, I every, mean. but every time I played, I did play against them. Like I did um, more than more than likely score against them. And um, it's funny though because they think that they're putting you off, but yeah. they're doing the opposite. Does that make they're, sense? Yeah, they're, they're, they're encouraging you. Best, yeah. you. And even you look at like um, the recent um, Villa Blues derby, the same thing. You try and put a player off; they want to do better against you. But I think for me, the probably favourite one was the second one though, when. Um, I scored the winner um, late on as well. Because it was like, after you scored, you think to yourself, you've done it again. Do you know what I mean? It was a bit of like deja vu. And you like, you know that the Birmingham City fans are thinking in the red, oh God, he's done it again. But in, that, in that moment, what, if the nice. ball hits the back of the net, you know, describe that. I think my first look was to the linesman, just to make sure, you know, um, it wasn't offside. But just crazy like um, I think if you look back at the the goals and the celebrations like you just you just go wild you run into the crowd you know you're going to get booked but you still do it yeah it was just like um definitely the derby goals the best um, feeling playing football I mean your career's over what's remarkable about you I mean you you know you you don't look it but you you're still <laughs> you're still a young man yeah I mean 31 years old you retire I mean that's yeah it's a young age that's definitely. very young yeah. Why, why? Why did you retire? So the, the main reason was like um, coming to the end of the, the season with um, Steve Bruce, having quite a lot of injuries, you know, um, even after games sometimes or training, you know, the body aching, a lot of like calf and hamstring issues. And um, that season when I left Villa, I sort of like tried to keep fit in the summer, you know, so I was keeping fit with my um, speaking to my agent. and. He come to me with a few, a few offers and I just, I just said to him straight, I said like, um, his name's Tim. I said, Tim, I can't see myself playing for anyone else. And like, he was like, um, come on, you're, you're still young, you're 31. But I just said to him at the time, I said, like, I just can't do it. I don't think I could give what, I, do you know what I mean? I couldn't give the same. And I think the offers as, as well the, was Villa in the same. Nothing. Yeah, the offers as well were in the same league as the Villa. So I would have to come here. Do you know, like, and like play and probably like, maybe get a chance to score. So it wasn't really like something I wanted to do. I've got like a close family as well. So the offers abroad wasn't really for me either. Do you regret that? No, no, you're a no, year two, on, two, two years I think, on. Yeah, two years on. I, I don't regret it, no. I, I think I made the right choice of not playing in, um, you know, in the championship. And don't get me wrong, I did have all the offers of going down to League One, League Two, but I just couldn't do it. You know, like, like there, there's, there's some players that will go down the leagues and you know until they can't walk anymore but for me it was like after playing such, such a high level for Aston Villa 
I couldn't really see myself going down the leagues, to be honest, and, you know, scrapping, scrapping in games on a Tuesday night. I couldn't really see it. Who was the best player you played with at Villa? You're going to get me in trouble here. No, I'm not, um, you say, just, just say what you I feel. I have to say Gareth Barry. Right. Who have you upset by saying that? Probably Petroff, Delph, Young. <laughs> probably upset all of them. But I think Gareth Barry, you know, I think he just goes to show he's still playing now. You know, he's still at West Brom um, at his age as well. I think he's nearly 37, 38, but he was a great player. Your best manager at Villa? Would be Martin O'Neill. Your worst manager? Just can I name a few? <laughs> you can name as many as you like. No, I'll say Remy Gardy. Really? Yeah. What What didn't you rate about Remy? I think everyone didn't rate anything about him, to be honest. The, the whole Was thing. there anything good about Remy? No. No, nothing at all. 